ಶ್ರುತಿ ಸ್ಮೃತಿ ಪುರಾಣ ಆಲಯ ಕರುಣಾಲ ನಮಿ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದ ಶಂಕರ ಲೋಕಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಕೇಶವ ಬಾದರಾಯಣ ಸೂತ್ರಭಾಷ್ಯಕೃತ ವಂದೇ ಭಗವಂತ ಪುನಃ ಪುನಃ ಈಶ್ವರೋ ಗುರುರಾತ್ಮೇತಿ ಮೂರ್ತಿ ಭೇದ ವಿಭಾಗಿನೆ ವ್ಯೋಮವತ್ ವ್ಯಾಪ್ತ ದೇಹಾಯ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತ ನಮಃ ಸದಾ ಶಿವ ಸಮಾರಂಭ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರಾಂ ಓಂ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹ ನೌ ಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿ ನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿದ್ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಓಂ ಪಾರ್ಥಯ ಪ್ರತಿಬೋಧಿತ ಭಗವತ ನಾರಾಯಣೇನ ಸ್ವಯಂ ವ್ಯಾಸೇನ ಗ್ರಥಿತ ಪುರಾಣ ಮುನಿ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ಅದ್ವೈತಾಮೃತವರ್ಷಿಣಿ ಭಗವತಿ ಅಷ್ಟಾಧ್ಯಾಯಿ ಅಂಬ ತ್ವಾಮನುಸಂದಿ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತೆ ಭವದ್ವೇಷಿಣಿ ಯಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವರುಣೇಂದ್ರ ರುದ್ರ ಮರುತ ಸ್ತುನ್ವಂತಿ ದಿವ್ಯೈಸ್ತವೈ ವೇದೈ ಸಾಂಗಪದ ಕ್ರಮೋಪನಿಷದೈ ಗಾಯಂತಿ ಯಂ ಸಾಮಗಾ ಧ್ಯಾನಾವಸ್ಥಿತ ತದ್ಗತೇನ ಮನಸ ಪಶ್ಯಂತಿ ಯಂ ಯೋಗಿನ ಯಾಂತಂ ನ ವಿದುಸುರಸುರಗಣ ದೇವಾಯ ತಸ್ಮೈ ನಮಃ ದೇವಾಯ ತಸ್ಮೈ ನಮಃ ಬುದ್ಧಿಯುಕ್ತ ಉಭೆ ಸುಕೃತ ದುಷ್ಕೃತ ಫಲಿಷಿಣ ಮನೀಷಿಣಿಲ ಶ್ರೋತವ್ಯ 
<clears throat> so somebody said that last class uh, verse number uh, 50 was it that was not recorded the translation of that is that correct so let me do that just for the sake of those who may have missed that class so verse number 50 buddhi yukto jahati hai ube sukruta dushkrute tasmad yogaya yujyasva yoga karma su kaushalam so the translation is like this <clears throat> one who is endowed with the sameness of mind so buddhi yukta the first word buddhi yukta one who is endowed with the sameness of mind gives up both punyam and papam ube sukrita dushkrite jahati so gives up both punyam and papam here in this world iha iha here in this world iha means here but we have to understand it as in this life itself in this world swamiji says because the idea that most people have about moksha is after death so we are saying we are refuting that that's a different kind of moksha we call it apekshika moksha if at all it is a moksha but uh, moksha has to be while living not after death okay full stop therefore tasmat therefore commit yourself to karma yoga yoga ya yujyasva commit yourself to karma yoga full stop karma yoga is discretion in action yoga karma su kaushala karma yoga is discretion in action or karma yoga is proper interpretation of dharma and you have to interpret dharma so that you can do the right thing so that's the idea there okay so the last shloka was karma jam buddhi yukta hi phalam tyaktva manishinaha janma bandha vinir muktaha padam gachant yanamayam so here so here we we talked about a couple of uh, couple of points we noted <clears throat> that the the birth was considered as perceived as bondage as being bound okay that idea was mentioned here janma bandha vinir muktaha so one becomes liberated with this knowledge one becomes liberated while liberated from the bondage of birth that we saw why that is so and uh, and of course in the verse before that we saw iha in this world itself meaning while we are alive we don't have to die in order to get moksha that idea was it comes again also later but it's it was mentioned by krishna in the last shloka so that liberation is not after death so that idea was seen okay so now we are at verse number 52 okay yada te moha kalilam buddhir vyatitarishyati tada gantasi nirvedam shrotavyasya shrutasya cha that is how that is the shloka <clears throat> so krishna is telling okay this 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 vinir uh, muktaha the previous shloka so one becomes free and one becomes liberated if you want to use that word one becomes liberated so here and then he said earlier by using karma yoga by being committed to karma yoga you get liberated so in this next shloka he is highlighting highlighting one particular aspect which will liberate a person and uh, says when your mind is no longer deluded that is the idea so you can see the word moha is there in the third word yadate moha kalilam that moha here means misplaced ideas and 
ideas we entertain which are not properly inquired into uh, that is called moha and uh, just samsara moha sometimes they say so let's look at this shloka <clears throat> so yada tada there are two words first line starts with yada second line starts with tada so in sanskrit students will quickly recognize when something then something that is the way the sentence is formed yada means when or if some if a then b okay that is what is being said here so let's see what that is so the verb in the first line vyati tarishyati vyati tarishyati so crossing over so this tairna the idea of swimming is there in hindi tairna is there so that tarishyati if you will cross over so if you will cross over what te moha kalilam moha kalilam the impurity of delusion and krishna is saying that delusion that misplaced priority is an impurity if you cross over that delusion so what can be the delusion so we saw earlier on the we use the word viveka viveka what is viveka i think by now you know atma anatma viveka viveka means discernment right discernment ability to discern distinguish between any two things is called viveka so ability to see more than meets the eye it's called viveka and i don't think what you're seeing is you know you shouldn't believe simply what you see all that glitters is not gold you know when people say that it means what there is something hey wait a minute i understand it's glittering like gold but don't get carried away by it so what makes you say that that which makes you say that is viveka means you know something more than what meets the eye so here in this case it has nothing to do with the various things that you see in this world so you you go to go go outside you want to have a drink and then you a juice or something and in india you can have you know juices on the street you can have we can go to a restaurant and have a drink all this you can do in america you can't on the street means uh, it's hard to uh, in during festive festivities are there then you you can have i suppose you can have drinks vendors are there lined up but in india it's very common so when you say when you go there and say no i think we should avoid this place i think we should avoid this place means what something tells you that it's you know we will we will choose a different place and you can't prove it but there is something you see so all that is viveka but here the viveka the discernment sometimes the word discrimination is used in textbooks and we are not using that word because because of the connotations of the word discrimination we discussed that before so this discernment for those who are new d i s c e r n that's the word here so ability to see that there is an atma and there is something called anatma ability to understand that this whole world of things is anatma and there is atma which is me which is the conscious being which is very different from anatma this idea anatma is limited anatma is temporary anatma is time bound it is space bound but atma we are told by the shastram it is not bound by any of those limitations that that ability to see that is called viveka and so here uh here the here the viveka tells me that 
I say I am, I am, I have all problems. My life is full of problems. And so I victimize myself with all the problems. Problems from the world. So Adi Bhautika is there. Bhautika means people, these people cause problems to me. The world in general causes problems. And there is pandemic and so on and so forth as though we don't need, as though we don't have enough. We have pandemic these days. And uh, and then problems with the body. The body is a constant source of problems. After a certain age, hey, let me add that because somebody might say, no, no, what do you mean constant source of problems? So that means you have not yet reached 40 or 50. That's what does that mean? <laughs> So just wait until you get 50 and then the bones start creaking. You start hearing sounds. So where is the sound coming from? Hey, it's coming from your own body. <laughs> so this is how it starts. So, so I have, then what happens? I perceive these problems and nobody wants to have any of these problems. And I want to get rid of the problems. Obvious. And we, we seek solutions outside Temporal solutions must be sought. We have, we have to solve problems on a daily basis, no doubt. But solution to the fundamental problem of I am limited and I am bound and I need to do something to help myself, to save myself, protect myself. That fundamental problem we're talking about. And when the problem is centered on I. Correct? Problem is centered on I. It's not centered on the body. The body is mortal, but that's not my problem. My problem is I am mortal. Think about it. Body is mortal is not a problem. Because I know body has to be mortal. Because anything that is born has to go. Everything is changing. We have covered all that. So body, of course, is, 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 has a limit. But that's not my problem. My problem is what? I am mortal. I am going to get finished. I am subject to pain. I am subject to sorrow. That's my biggest problem. And so, and the, when the problem is centered on I, finding a solution to the problem outside the I is the greatest delusion. Moha Kalilam. Look at that. Moha. So the greatest delusion is what? Trying to find a solution where it doesn't exist. So ability to see that is called Viveka. It's called Viveka. So, um, so then if, if, if I can free myself, if I, if I am able to appreciate the teaching and beginning to appreciate that, yes, the solution has to be me. Sometimes they say solution is in me. Okay, for now, let's say me, in me. So that's why popular statement, the problem is you, the solution is you. Okay. So it comes from this idea that the problem that I, that I claim belongs to me is really not coming from anywhere else. It, it, it has to be solved right here. Okay. So having said that, then he says, Yada, Yada te moha kalilam vyati tarishyati. So when you, when you appreciate this, this problem and you cross over that idea that this will, I'm somehow going to get better. By doing something, manipulating this world, I'm constantly manipulating this world, which includes people, which includes things. And uh, somehow it doesn't seem to work if I can appreciate that. And if I can then say, yes, I have to, there is some fundamental problem which I don't understand and I need a permanent solution. If I can say that, then what? Then he says, Nirvedam. He uses the word Nirvedam. The third word in the shloka. In the second line of the shloka is Nirvedam. So, Nirvedam is same as Vairagyam. Vairagyam, dispassion. Viragaha, dispassion. 
So if I am no longer under under the spell, under the spell of delusion, spell of funny ideas, then I will gain what is called nirvedam, dispassion. <clears throat> dispassion. So dispassion towards what? Dispassion. I think we understand dispassionate, right? Dispassionate means you are not carried away by things. It doesn't mean you give up your likes and dislikes, but there is nothing in the world that can just sweep you away. You don't get swept away by anything. That is called dispassion. And you are you can enjoy anything you want, but but you understand the limitations. That is called dispassion. Okay. So now he's going to say dispassion towards what? In the second line, he says that very interesting use of words which we will understand now. Shrota vyasya cha. I mean, shrota vyasya, shrota sya cha. Tada nirvedam ganta asi. Then that means what? Yada te moha kalilam buddhir vyati tarishyati. So buddhi, when your mind. When your mind overcomes this impurity of delusion, right? Yada te moha kalilam buddhi vyati tarishyati. Tada. Then what happens? Nirvedam ganta asi. You will gain dispassion. Nirvedam gantas. Dispassion towards what? Shrota vyasya, shrota syacha. So let's understand that. It means like this. Shrota syacha means what you've heard. Dispassion towards what you've heard about. And dispassion towards what you're going to hear about. This is what literal meaning is that. Let's understand these two words. Dispassion towards the things you have heard about. So, we've heard about so many things. We have pursued so many things in life. So, it can be it's education. It's a family. It, ha it, it has to be. It's, 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 it's buying a home and securing a home and various ways of securing ourselves. All this we have heard about. And we have pursued all of that. And yet, there is some kind of hankering. There is still a doubt. You know, this journey is not going to end if this is the way I'm going to lead my life. That idea is there because you have Viveka. That is why we are all here studying this Bhagavad Gita. <clears throat> Otherwise, there is no need to study. Because Bhagavad Gita has to offer us something which is not offered anywhere else. Only then this makes sense. Only then Bhagavad Gita gets the status of Shastram. Loosely called scripture. I don't use the word scripture that much. But that status it gets. Because you don't, you cannot get what the Bhagavad Gita gives you from any other place. Other than the Upanishads. I mean Upanishads, Bhagavad Gita are all the same. Okay. Now. So we've heard all this. We've done. So they say been there, done that. You know. Been there, done that means what? These, all these phrases I learned in America, you know. So, be, a nice phrase it is. So, uh, I still, I, I've never used it. I don't think I've used that phrase, but I've heard people saying it. Been there, done that means, come on, what are you talking about? That's old stuff. That's old stuff. You know, we went to, we went to a cruise uh, to some islands, you know. They have all these funny names. And, and uh, what is it? Aruba and this and that. I'm forgetting these names now. Okay, it's been too long. I, have not, I don't see these advertisements anymore. So all these beautiful blue waters and blue skies and you look at it and say, you know, you know shall we go to Aruba next? You know, Christmas vacation, they say. So like this, somebody says and they say, the friends say, come on, been there, done that. Means, come on, tell me something new. Come on, excite me. This is all boring stuff you're talking about. So, Shrutasya Cha. I've heard all that, okay? Tell me something new. That's what. So, these things are all heard of. Heard of, done that. Okay? And then there are more things you're going to hear that you have not done. People are all aching to do stuff, you know? And uh, because your uh, job is there and everything is taken care of, and so you, you have to figure out what to do next. Shall we build a patio in our house? You know, you've got a nice house. And uh, we've been thinking of a patio and I think it's time to build one. 
so the patio project starts and a huge project so let's do something beautify our home so like this we keep on doing stuff constantly making changes and like this artha and kama both kama we said kama is what this trips we need to you know looking for good trips that's why people go to parties i think uh, uh, now people invite me to parties sometimes they've invited but not that much because uh, i'm not that interesting of a guy you know you need to party people means you got to be extroverted you got to talk about things and this vacation and that vacation my children this guy doesn't have children also so what is he going to talk about you know so all these problems are there but some kind people have invited me to parties and uh, <laughs> and i have and i I've, i've enjoyed part parties nothing wrong with a party but then so there they exchange what do you exchange in a party you're not going to talk technical stuff and you're not going to talk vedanta and i study i'm i'm in a bhagavad gita class it's very interesting you know you also should consider you know nobody says that i've not heard anybody saying that so they so they talk about a lot of things over this drinks and they talk so this vacation was good that was good and this was great that is great so you come out of this vacation i mean this party you get ideas what ideas you get what is the next better place to go you know honey it seems they went to bali indonesia that sounds very interesting hmm? bali because yeah, everything else is done you know been there done that so you need something very exotic and bali bali is not close by so it's very unlikely that many people have gone to bali in fact you have to look up google in order to find out where bali is right so bali then you find out and then you go there <clears throat> and then you go there and the next party you will say you know what you guys should all go to bali it's a great place to go to bali is in indonesia and uh, indonesia so another guy also was in the same party he heard he also is looking for ideas yeah people are looking for ideas shrutavyasya this is all shrutavyasya i am not i am not digressing shrut shrutavyasya shrutasya cha what has been heard and what has yet to be heard whatever you are going to hear so he also was in the same party and he heard it as mali instead of bali because it's very you know these parties are always noisy i don't know why party should be noisy i'm still trying to figure out and people come close by and talk you know you know they have to speak loudly also and uh, <laughs> music is blaring so you can't hear things properly so this guy heard it as mali so they booked a ticket to mali 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 and bali are 13000 kilometers apart mali is in africa bali is in indonesia they are they are, they are nowhere close to each other and this guy goes to mali and then gets mugged even before he comes out of the airport okay because to go to mali means you have to be you have to prepare yourself and so you have to be careful so you have even when you try to listen to others you have to listen carefully if you have doubts you ask call up and ask did you say mali and uh, did you mean africa you have to ask all these questions so shrutav shrota shrotavyas what are you going to hear a lot of ideas are going to come bitcoin bitcoin so the previous example i gave us kama enjoyment Atha is there, protecting my savings, investment. So next, next big investment. What is the, what are the investment ideas for the pandemic? For the pandemic struck investor, something you know, some catchy title people give, and then everybody reads that. A lot of things are there. Jai Kumar ji, Bitcoin and all, it's all been there, done that. Tell me something new. that's what people will say i think it's too old by now i think i have to not give that example any more i have to look for some other example so bitcoin is gone been there done that so next one is going to come up it's definitely going to come up this is called shrotavya sch shrotavya means what you are about to hear what you are going to hear and you are going to hear a lot and so you nirvedam gantasi one gains dispassion towards what was heard about and what is yet to be heard about 
look at the way krishna splits the world into two correct the whole world is split into two what you heard about and what you are going to hear about very interesting usage is it not i mean not that we are going to there are many things we will never hear about but it's enough all these magazines are there and uh, that's why this flight uh, flights uh, become interesting because flight magazine gives you many ideas what things you don't have at home suddenly you look at it you thought you had a great home <clears throat> then you look at the in flight magazine and you say what you got all these devices and all these uh, you can a pillow be like this also you know you get all these doubts so this is this is this whole trip is all shrutasya cha shrotavya cha okay so therefore if you say i am i want moksha then you have to ask yourself uh, do i have dispassion towards what i've heard and what i'm yet to hear is there something new going to come up which is going to shake you away the next big thing when it comes up is that going to sweep you away if it does that means i am not clear yet about what i am after what this moksha is is not clear yet <clears throat> okay so that's very important for a, for a, for one who is pursuing bhagavad gita studying upanishads it's important we need to be the clarity develops also i'm not saying we are clear on day 1 but as the study progresses we become more and more clear somebody asked me I, i lived in houston for 15 years so somebody asked me have you uh, so how is the space center i said i can answer the question where is the space center i can show you the directions i can't say how is the space center because i've never been there i never been to the space center nasa space center in houston i lived there 15 years i've driven by that road so many times Anjali is smiling. Anjali lives right there, stones throw, and Prasad ji lives there, and so many people live there. And not only I have have I not visited the space center, the thought of visiting the space center also did not arise in my mind. You may or may not believe it, but that's how it is. And uh, I don't know why that is, but that's the way it is. Never struck me that I should play, visit this place. and now sitting here in koimatur i don't i didn't even have a thought oh i wish i had visited the space center you know now i don't know if i will ever go to america and i wish i had seen these places that hankering can be there is possible but so far that thought has not come maybe it will come later i don't know but this is this is called nirvedam vairagya towards things Doesn't mean you should not visit any of these places. You are welcome to visit, but I'm saying that hankering, hankering need not be there. That longing for things, and uh, last couple of years, people who visited India from America, they used to tell me we visited, we want, we visited Jaipur. We go to Jaipur. So three, four people consistently said the same thing. So I was wondering, maybe it's some WhatsApp message going around about Jaipur or what, you know? because everybody is doing the same thing so somehow they must have been talking to each other and uh, jaipur has become famous and so this uh, this is uh, it's important for us to know very important because it, the, the people are just looking for getaways you know and uh, the the tourism industry is 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 growing year after year after year it grows and uh, once i went to a conference in a city called in america again in a city called bozeman bozeman b o z e b o z e m a n how many of you have heard of bozeman okay so a few people are raising their hands okay it's in the state of montana in america okay generally people won't hear it because it's not like new york or chicago or whatever you know chennai mumbai 
etc all these are big places we hear about so we end up there we means i was a student at that time i was probably uh, a, 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 a assistant faculty in a university at that time so we all went to this bosman how big can the city of bosman be it can be like new york because if it were like new york you would have heard about it population of new york is let's say 8 million 9 million 10 million let's say new york population is 10 million chennai population is 7 million mumbai is 18 million and then um, houston is some 2 million 2 and a half million chicago los angeles all come in between 4 million 6 million like that new york is 10 million now the the state of montana the population of the state of montana is 1 million okay 1 million 1/10 of the population of new york the entire state big state okay so it's 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 a state and uh, very few people the density of population is very less so no wonder we have not heard of these cities not only not heard we generally don't go also those who are not in montana probably don't go to montana you can guess you can assume so we go to montana because the conference is held in a place called uh, montana state university i think that's the name of the university if i still recall because it's been long ago 1991 or 2 or something like that so the the plane is landing in the airport the population of bozeman is 10000 uh, no 50000 or something today it's about those days it must have been 20000 30000 Twenty thousand population is can that can first of all there need not be an airport in such a small town, but you can have some municipal airports and things like that. Generally, many cities in in uh, in the U.S. have small airports, at least a small airport. One strip will be there, a municipal airport they call it, just for government service, etc. And I land here, and as the plane is landing, I saw. huge huge aircrafts parked under under me okay and it, it was kind of i was a bit shocked taken taken aback i turned around i asked bob are we landing at bozeman or is it some other in between airport you know uh, something going via st louis or whatever and huge and uh, huge air strip and aircraft after aircraft it sounded like some big big city look to me like a big city and then it turns out i find later on that <laughs> this bozeman is not far away from yellowstone national park which is in wyoming and uh, yellowstone is of course it's a big attraction no doubt and uh, like this this big attraction is there there are some other big attractions nearby so people choose to come to bozeman and then do their vacationing so look at that so idea now i have given an idea so now the idea we can get an idea oh those in the us they may say okay let's go to bozeman so that means many people knew about bozeman and they have gone there and many people didn't know about it so these kinds of exotic destinations we are going to hear about and exotic things to do this will solve my problem that will solve my problem when we are clear there is nothing out there that is going to solve my fundamental problem okay that is that is important next best thing will not solve my problem this has to be very clear this has to be very clear so 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 that our viveka and vairagya is not shaky anymore it's clear that is why all this these habits we have at home you know having satvik food food that is with, with that is nutritious but it need not be salty need not be that sweet and you cut down on salt cut down on sweet all this upavasa we practice once a month we practice fasting all these things are there it helps us by giving us that vairagya dispassion very important some of the practices we have in our sanatana dharma hinduism those things uh, are meant to give us these qualities of dispassion so forth okay so so here here shankar swami ji gives an example in his talk 
he says so, so somebody asked swami ji this question swami ji you've been talking about adi shankaracharya you've been talking about vedanta what if somebody comes up and then dismisses shankaracharya dismisses vedanta and then new thing is going to come a new idea is there of moksha which is not what we have talked about which is not what krishna talked about then what will happen to you because you committed your entire life to teaching bhagavad gita and reading the commentaries of shankaracharya and to that swamiji's answer was look first of all shankaracharya is an acharya he is a teacher he did not start shankaraism neither did he start shankaraism nor am i a shankaraite we, we shankara taught the upanishads to us there is something called pramanam pramanam means it's like the eyes which enable you to see what is out there already and what you see is what you get and you have to operate the eyes to get what is there like that uh, and like the mirror you stand in front of the mirror and you stand in front of the mirror to see yourself not to see the mirror does anybody stand in front of the mirror to see the mirror huh no can you believe this you stand and look at the mirror but really you're not looking at the mirror you're looking at your your own face full commitment is to your face not to the mirror unless you see a crack somewhere etc then only your attention goes to the mirror but until then your attention is not in the mirror but yet you seem to be looking at the mirror like that i look at the vedas not because I, and through the vedas i am looking at myself this we must keep in mind that's why they say the vedas is a mirror of words mirror of words they supposed to show you i must see myself through the vedas therefore where is the question of being committed to shankara this philosophy or that philosophy that is why we don't even call it philosophy you want you would not have seen me using the word philosophy and if i use it i will correct myself so there is no shankaraism all this is not there and it and what is the message given by the upanishads that uh, that uh, that swami ji is teaching us everything in the world is brahman there is nothing other than brahman science also is proving the same thing everything is quark they say and the quark is going to further be reduced into smaller and smaller entities but they have all they, science has long ago said the whole world is nothing but electrons protons and neutrons now it's all quark shastram is saying everything is brahman okay let everything be brahman so how does it matter to me well you are atma and that atma is also brahma therefore you fill up the world you fill up the world make a note of that you are the world you are the world i am reminded of a song long ago you are the world like that there was a song that was uh, done by all these people michael jackson and all these famous artists and uh, to raise funds for africa i think it was you are the world you are something like i forget the words but here shastram says you are the world you are the cause of the world mind boggling statements okay you are the world you are complete you are full there is nothing that you lack this is the statement who is going to improve that statement okay somebody has come and said something can that something be better than this can i be more than the whole for this the new thing to be better it has to be more than the whole if he says you are more than the whole that means he has not understood what i am understood what i am saying whole includes everything there can't be something more than the whole so nobody can better this statement nobody can better the statement you can only say no it's not possible for me to be the whole i can't believe it i don't understand it i can't believe it yeah i can't believe it maybe you can say it but the shastram says it my life or death it's a question of life or death here if i don't understand it i get to lose everything 
That's what Shastram says. This has to be understood. So therefore, nobody can improve what Vedanta says. And it is, and you nobody can dismiss it also. Why nobody can dismiss it? How can anybody dismiss yourself? Suppose I say I dis, they say I dismissed this this Brahma. Brahma cannot be dismissed because it is the whole. Atma cannot be dismissed because it is you. I cannot dismiss myself because I exist. Existence is nobody can dismiss existence. And so you can't dismiss it. You can't improve it. So there is no question. You can only say you can go to my, you can go to heaven and my heaven and your heaven. These arguments can be there because heaven is limited, and heaven is a place. And once you say it is a place, then again you have to start comparing. Is it as good as Hawaii? Is it as good as this place, that place, this place? We have to start comparing. This is how all these religions come up. Everybody offers something, some some place where you can be there forever. And we say this ever business doesn't fly. You can be there. You can go there. We agree. You can be there also. We agree. No problem. We have no problem. Vedantins have no problem with all this. But we will say the, a place where you go to, you have to come out of. When you say it is a place, it is limited. And when you say you are going somewhere, it's a result of karma. Result of karma is always limited because karma is limited. So these are all basics of Vedanta. So we can easily dismiss those kinds of statements. But this, I am the whole, cannot be dismissed. And in order to dismiss it, you have to study a lot. You have to know a lot. You have to know that who you are. Which means if you start knowing, you will end up with Vedanta. This was Swamiji's response to that, that question, hypothetical question that Swamiji had raised. So therefore, my dispassion towards not just anything that I'm going to hear about in the future, any new philosophy that's going to come up. Because no, anybody can come up with any, any idea about who you are, about the future, about after death. And I have to be, can I be dispassionate about anything that comes about? Dispassion. No new thing is going to shake me. Because I am the whole. I am in the process of understanding what the statement means. I am the whole cannot be improved. Okay. Therefore, that everything is mithya. And the whole world is mithya. How can mithya give me a solution to something where I am satyam? I am the truth of the whole world. And so, this clarity is called viveka. And that's what gives me this nirvedam. Nirvedam means vairagyam. Towards anything new that might come up. Okay. So therefore, <clears throat> therefore this shloka becomes important. It's a very uh, nice statement that Krishna makes about, about strengthening what we already know. And the more you are clear about life, the more you are clear about Satyam and Mithya, the less you can be swept away, the less you will be shaken. So that's what he says here. So let's go back to the shloka. <clears throat> and uh, let's see how to translate this. So, when your intellect crosses over the impurity of delusion, Yada te buddhihi moha kalilam vyati tarishyati. There is anmayam of that. Anmayam means reorganizing the words of the, of the shloka. So, when your intellect crosses over the impurity of delusion, so they call, Krishna calls delusion as an impurity. Like all the other, other ideas like greed and uh, other words are used. Tada, tada means then <clears throat> you shall gain a dispassion
Okay. So then you shall gain a dispassion. Tada nirvedam gantasi. You shall gain dispassion. Towards what? Towards what has been heard and what is yet to be heard. Shrotavyasya shrutasya cha. So I felt, I, I liked Krishna's use of words, uh, Shruta and Shrotavya. Shrotavya in Sanskrit also means something else, which means like Kartavya, to be done, to be heard, must be done, must be heard. Okay, that meaning also is there for Shrotavya. Okay, you keep that in mind. And so here, what... We, we hear the interpretation of what must be heard is what is yet to be heard. Otherwise, must be heard means uh, that doesn't uh, fit in this context. Okay. Good. So with uh, so with that, we complete this shloka. Let's chant the next shloka before we conclude. <clears throat> All right. So Anjali, would you like to uh, chant after me? <clears throat> Go ahead and unmute yourself. Yeah. So we are chanting number 53. Shruti. Shruti. Vipati Panna. Vipati Panna. Te. Te. Yada. Yada. Pasyati. Pasyati. Nischala Nischala Samadhau Samadhau Achala Buddhihi Achala Buddhihi Tada Tada Yogam Yogam Awapsiasi Awapsiasi Once again Shruti Shruti Viprati Pannate Vipati Panyate Yada Stasyati Yada Stasyati Nischala Nischala Samadha Vachala Samadha Vachala Buddhihi Buddhihi Tada Yogam Tada Yogam Avapsyasi Avapsyasi We'll conclude with that. We'll we will uh, look at this verse number 53 in the next class. Om Pur Namadaf Pur Namidam Pur Nath Pur Namudachyate Pur Dasya Pur Damadaya Pur Dameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Guru Namaha Harihi Om